What is up guys? I am finally back in the shop working on some things. Uh, I think a lot of you've been waiting on this. Now that summer's over, uh, I can finally get back in here and start working on some previous projects. Got some new projects lined up. Check this out. Just pick that up. That's kind of cool. Uh, but tonight we got tiny project. Okay, so here's what we got. Picked up a little 110 quad off Marketplace. Uh, I've been watching a couple of YouTube videos, guys making little drift carts out of these things. And it looks like a ton of fun. So I wanted to give it a shot. Uh, my whole goal is to build this thing for right around 300 bucks or as close as we can stay to that. Uh, like I said, pick this up off Marketplace. No idea what Ching Chong brand it is, but supposedly it runs and also picked up some uh, go-kart wheels and tires also off marketplace paid 150 for those so we're at 250 on it and my goal tonight is just to get it stripped down to just bare essentials uh, get those wheels mounted up get this thing slammed on the ground and kind of get a plan for the rest of it So how much cooler is this thing? Just getting all that dorky stuff off of it. And obviously there'll be a bunch more stuff that gets cut off as we go. Uh, as we figure out what we need and don't need, we'll be losing a lot of these brackets and some parts. Uh, I just don't wanna get ahead of myself and end up cutting off something we're gonna end up needing. But for now, we're gonna work on getting these wheels mounted up. And I should mention, if all you wanted to do is uh, bolt on some go-kart wheels on one of these things, I did find uh, different hubs. Uh, these are both three lug, but this is a lot smaller. Uh, I found adapters and hubs. You could bolt these right on if you wanted to, but I figured if we're cutting it up. I wouldn't mind making this thing a little wider anyways. So we're going to make our own adapters. And so far my plan, uh, be taking that rear hub off, found a piece of pipe that slides over perfect. So once we figure out uh, the width we need, we'll cut that to length cut out a couple of plates that'll get welded to the end of there that'll be the back bolt those right up front it's going to be a little more difficult uh, my plan is hopefully this works is take the hub off the rear we are going to use those on the front along with the factory hub it's actually a brake drum that has uh, bearings in it so we kind of need to use that and it has the three bolt holes match the same as the rear hub and went to tractor supply found some spacers that are going to space it out perfectly so we'll take these studs out use these spacers with some bolts through it and uh we'll get this thing bolted up and same thing found another piece of pipe that is going to fit on that hub perfectly cut that to length with a couple more plates welded to there and uh hey, should be able to get these fronts mounted up no problem uh that's the plane at least so we'll see how it goes Okay, so I figure I'll show you guys uh, what I came up with so far before I go any farther. Uh, in case any of you guys ever want to do this, you have a nice 
step by step on what I did. And I'll show you guys on this side because it's still all together in factory. But on the other side, I went ahead and trimmed the uh, spindle and the castle nut back pretty much even with the inside of the cotter pin. So I took maybe a half an inch of it off, not even that. But I'll show you guys why on this side. Uh, because obviously the uh, factory brake drum and this hub that I'm now using, they both spin where the uh, spindle does not. So you need a little space in between there. But that's why I did that. And next I took, uh, these are obviously the rear hubs I was talking about, now gonna be the front. Uh, and they're threaded. So I went ahead, took a drill bit and uh, drilled them out to where a bolt can just pass through. Uh, ran my spacers and bolted them right into the factory drum and uh, good to go. And like I said, I was thinking I was gonna have to run a little piece of a pipe, space it out a little bit, but that's actually about the space I want, uh, maybe three inches, four inches. So that on both sides, widen this thing uh, six inches or so, and I'll be happy with that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut out some plates. This is a template for the bolt pattern on those wheels. And obviously I'll just have to uh, weld them up. I'll stagger the bolts so I can actually get to these ones and these ones if I have to, but it's working out pretty nice, way simpler than I thought it was. So I'm gonna go ahead, get some plates cut out and uh, see what we got. All right, so I just wanna show you guys, uh, you don't need fancy tools or anything to be doing this. I'm building this with junk I dug out of the metal dumpster, uh, basic hand tools, grinder, drill, and I uh, got this plate cut out in the basic shape just using cutoff wheel. Uh, this one, I already finished up with a flap disc, drilled it out, and for junk, that was in the dumpster and basic hand tools. Uh, that's pretty good. So I'm happy with that. Get a couple of these made up and uh, start welding. Okay, so I got the four plates made up and to make sure everything is centered when we go to weld it up, I found some washers that fit in there perfectly. So I just took a stack of them and bolted them up, act as a guide, and they fit right in there perfect, nice and tight. So we know that's centered. So we can come back through. Um, we'll make sure our holes are staggered so we can get to everything if we need to but go ahead and get that welded up and that'll be the front. All right, so I got that one all welded up. Uh, I ended up having to notch it to get the bolts in, but no big deal. So I'll come back over here and it'll get bolted back up with those spacers like I showed you earlier. And that side, be able to put that wheel back on, fits just like it should, get that thing bolted up and uh, jump to the other side.
Okay, so we got both fronts on there. They're good to go. But of course, ran out of welding wire right in the middle of the job. So not much we can do with the rear tonight. Uh, about the only thing we can do until we get uh, more parts and supply is get this suspension ripped out of here, get this thing on the ground, and uh, kind of start to get a plan of attack on what we're gonna do with that. So how much cooler is this thing? Just de-dorkifying it, stripping it down, cooler wheels and tires, and uh, slamming it to the ground. Obviously the back wheels are just sitting there, same as suspension, but this is about where it's gonna sit when it's done. Uh, I'm gonna try to reuse uh, these front springs without the little strut thing in the center. Should be pretty easy. I think I can just get away with uh, building an upper cup for these to sit in and they should slide over them factory tabs on the bottom and on the rear just using the uh factory upper tabs i'll have to make some new ones off uh, this axle tube on the back weld that up should work pretty good then uh we'll start going through taking everything off that doesn't need to be on here a bunch of these little tabs and brackets anything that doesn't need to be on there will be coming off just completely strip this thing down. But that's about as far as we can go with it tonight. I'll get some more parts and supplies and we'll be back at it tomorrow. Okay, so we are back in business and the plan for the night is Get these rear adapters made so we can get these wheels back on here then we'll uh, jump to the suspension and if you remember my plan for the rear i just got some tubing that slides over the axle so we'll get that cut to length and get our plates welded to the end of them get these wheels back on here but before i forget i want to show you guys something i noticed on this thing and this wasn't even me but you know i'm going to leave it on there zip tied master link zip tie the world but let's get to work. Okay, so just a quick look before I go any farther, give you guys an idea of what I came up with. So I got my tubing cut to length, and just like before, I found a nut that fits perfectly inside there. And I did have to drill the center hole out of my plate a little bit, but I'm sure you guys understand that'll get bolted together before I weld it, just so I know everything's dead center and good to go. And I just like to use bolts and nuts and washers and stuff like that because I'm no machinist and helps to keep everything in line. I do that with a lot of projects. So maybe help you guys out a little bit, but give you guys another look at this side. I already got it welded up and I got it hammered onto the axle a good bit. So I know that's nice and center, but just in case I went ahead and cut a piece of angle iron and just clamped it to both sides. So I know everything's good to go on that. All I uh, obviously weld it and i'm also going to drill some holes and plug weld it at the end that side would be good to go so i'm going to go ahead get this side made up and uh hopefully everything works out
All right, guys, so check it out. Got that rear axle all welded up. Got the wheels back on it. I uh, got it sitting about where I want it to sit all said and done. It's sitting on two by fours right now, but that's about where I want it to sit. And the other day I was thinking I would just make uh, some cups, top and bottom, kind of a spring pocket to hold these things in place. But I got to looking at the factory shocks that just completely fell apart whenever I took them out of there. And I think I can just cut the uh, shaft off the top there. And we'll just weld that to the top of the spring. And it'll use factory uh, tabs. And then on the bottom, we'll just weld a uh, washer on there. And cut the eyelet off the bottom. Weld it up. And again, just use factory uh, uh, tabs. I think that should get us about where we want to be. And then we'll uh, jump to the back and figure that out. All right guys, so there it is. I ended up uh, just test fitting the rear shock back into the factory tab and it actually worked out just about perfect. Uh, once I have my weight on it, it sits nice and level, which is good because halfway through doing the front, I ran out of welding gas, so not my prettiest work, but we got the job done and it never fails. You run out of wire one day, you're gonna run out of gas the next it seems, but seems like a good stopping point on it. So next time we'll uh, start cutting a bunch of junk off that doesn't need to be on there. Just going around getting everything cleaned up and maybe running, who knows, we'll see how far we get. But there it is. I'm super pumped with it for 250 bucks so far. And uh, hopefully it motivates somebody to just get out in the shop and uh, build something cool because it's always been my thing. You don't need a ton of money, uh, fancy tools. You don't need to know everything. Hell, you don't even need to know anything. Just get out there, start cutting, and uh, build something cool.